AT like this is. Yeah, atelectasis. Atelectasis. Yeah. I think I should. Oh, I thought you were typing it out. So say if you're typing it out, it'll do a spell check for you. Or it could also be done by fluid, right? Like a hemothorax. Right, so that's what I'm going to go with next, okay? Now, what also can happen here is you'll have fluids, surrounding fluids getting into, surrounding fluids getting into the pleural cavity, and that's known as pleural effusion. Pleural effusion. Now, if it was specific to blood getting into the pleural cavity, what is that known as? Hemothorax. Yes. Hemothorax, okay? So you have pneumothorax, which is air, Pleural effusion was, is uh, any other fluids besides blood, that's pleural effusion, and if it's blood, it's hemothorax. Either way, when you have any, if you have air or any type of fluid getting into the pleural cavity, it makes it hard to breathe. It makes it hard to breathe. Now, fluid in the fluid in the pleural cavity doesn't always cause you know, atelectasis, it's usually caused by pneumothorax. Can it still happen? Yes, it can happen, but you really need a lot of fluids in the, in the pleural cavity to cause the, the lungs to collapse. All right, any questions here? So I may have gotten ahead of myself, so if the slides come up again, we'll just kind of discuss it briefly. All right, any questions here? See, like this, oh, there it is. <laughs> Did jump ahead, okay. So we got pneumothorax, hemothorax, and then we got pleural effusion. Then we have pleurisy, which is a uh, fancy, uh, it's just a simpler word for pneumonitis. All right. All right, here's another cross section, a CT cross section of T7A is the, what's the A? Heart. Heart. It's the heart, okay? I'm having you guys use your x-ray vision. What's B? It's on the, I'm sorry, what's D? It's on the right side, right where the, right below the diaphragm. Liver? It's gonna be the liver, so this is liver. <clears throat> okay, so this is the section of the liver. Okay, then over here we have B, Esophagus? No. No? That's the aorta. Oh, the great vessels. The aorta. Okay. And then C is the esophagus. So we've got this. This is the aorta. So then what is this? That's a. The it's vena, also it's a great vessel. The vena cava? Mm -hmm. So it's your vena cava. The aorta is going to be a lot bigger than the vena cava. Look how small that vena cava is. The B is going to be a lot larger because it has to withstand those of the high pressure coming from the left ventricle. And, it, and it's, it's uh, responsible for pumping great amounts of blood outside of your heart and into your systemic, into your body. Okay? All right. Lungs, what is this? Okay, trachea, apex of lung. Okay. Areas of the heart. The very top, I'm, I'm sorry, areas of the lungs. The very top part of the lungs is known as the apex of the lungs. When we're talking about the pair, we call them apices. So one is apex, two is uh, more than one is apices. So these are the apices of the lungs. The very bottom, the pointy areas here, where the lungs, are adjacent to the ribs is known as the costal, costal front angle, costal front angle. Where the lungs start to straighten out, That's called the base of the lungs. So these are your base, where they point inferiorly are your costophrenic angles. We just say angles. And the shape is produced by, the shape of the lungs is produced by the, what's this muscle here? Diaphragm. It's your diaphragm. Okay. All right. 
Juan Gordon. So here we have a chest x-ray. A, you can see that there is some air in the trachea, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the trachea. We said here where the carina is located, it's going to be at the level of what? T7. Uh, T4, T5. Yeah, the carina is at T4, T5. But the middle of the chest is right about here, which is T7. Okay. A new term that I want you guys to be familiar with is the hilum. So when we're looking at this x-ray here, the heart is kind of the obvious, okay, because it's a thick mass, so it's going to appear white on your radiograph. So this is your heart. The apex is on the left side. Then you will also see this area here with some increased densities. You won't see it here as much as you would here because there is left, the, the left side of the heart that's overlying the structure, but this is known as the hilar region. Hilar region, H-I-L-A-R, or hilum. What is the hilum? The hilum is the root region where the bronchi, blood vessels, lymph vessels, and nerve vessels enter and leave the lungs. Notice how it's a little bit more white in this area right here. It looks, it looks kind of vascular. Okay, so this is your hilar region. This is your heart. This is the apex of the heart. What do we have down here, this really white area? Diaphragm. Okay, that's your diaphragm. So again, the diaphragm separates the thoracic from the abdominal cavity. So this is your diaphragm. So also what we know is here, right below the left lung, you're going to have your diaphragm there, but you're also going to have a major organ on this side. Liver. It's the liver. So when you're looking at a chest x-ray, this is the area of the right hemidiaphragm, okay, right hemidiaphragm, with liver shadowing. So here we have your liver shadow. When you're looking at, uh, again, when you're looking at the chest, one of the things that I'm going to have you identify on a chest x-ray is the uh, aortic arch. And it looks like a candy cane. So the aortic arch, we're, we're talking about the aorta, right? So the descending aorta comes behind the heart, and then it'll loop around right here. This is the arch. It's going to come down like so. Okay, I'm going to remove the, my markings. And so can you guys see this extra density coming up this way? Mm -hmm. Right here? That's your arch, aortic arch. Okay, any questions on this? Now we have here the lateral. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, let's go back over here. What's this area called here? Apices or apex? Okay, that's your yeah, apex. And then down here. Your angles. That's your angle. And then here, where it flattens out, base. is your base. It's all about the base. <laughs> no trouble. That's what they say. <laughs> Am I the only one that's hip here? You're super <laughs> hip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we have the lateral. What's this? Heart. Heart. C. The uh, hilar region. It's your hilar region. Uh, I don't know what these point to. Upper lobe, the lobe. Okay. And then remember the picture that I showed you back ago with the fissure? Remember I said there was a line coming down? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is your fissure right here. So this is the oblique fissure of the left lung that separates the upper and lower lobe. Okay? Sometimes it's confused as the scapula. It's not the scapula, because the scapula is way up here. <coughs> Alright. Questions? Are we good? Can you see the aortic arch in that? You you may or may not. It's gonna come around like this.
Okay. But yeah, you can kind of see it coming around like this. Yeah, it's really hard to see. And then when you're looking at this right here, it looks like there's a hole in the lung, but that's just one of the vessels coming right at you. So you're, you're looking at the true cross-section of a vessel. Is it, is it one of the pulmonary arteries or veins? Or no? It could be, yeah, it could be one of the arteries or the veins. All right, third division is the mediastinum. It's the medial portion of the thoracic cavity between the lungs. We have four structures in the mediastinal area. You have your trachea, esophagus, thymus glands, the heart, and the great vessels. Okay, let's keep on going. The lungs within the mediastinum, the lungs are within the mediastinum. We have three lobes on the right, two on the left. Let's look at the heart and great vessels. So here we have the heart, trachea, uh, aorta from the arch. It's located over here. So what is this entire area called here? What are we calling this? Okay, the hilum or the hilar area. Okay, hilum or the hilar area. Now, the way respiration, what does respiration do also, the, this is your cardiovascular um, pulmonary, cardiopulmonary system. Cardio being the heart, pulmonary being respiration. So I, I look, I, I did a little graph there for you guys uh, for circulation as blood is being pumped out of your left ventricle. So from the left ventricle, blood makes its way out of the aorta, which is your largest artery of your body. From the aorta, it goes to the different arteries and supplies blood systemically, okay, and nourishes your vital tissues and organs. Once you have the gas and nutrient exchange, blood is then pumped into the veins and into the larger vein, which is your vena cava. Blood then enters your right atrium then your right ventricle, it's still not oxygenated. Now we need to get it oxygenated, right? So from the right ventricle, it's going to enter the pulmonary artery into the lungs, okay? What happens if there's a blockage there in the pulmonary artery and there is no gas exchange? You guys know what that's called? You guys remember PE or pulmonary say, embolism? Mm -hmm. Does somebody say pulmonary embolism? Mm -hmm. Okay, so pulmonary embolism occurs when there's a blockage in the pulmonary artery. Now the, the blood cannot get oxygenated. That's usually, that's an emergent type of uh, uh, situation and the patient can uh, experience sudden death. They can die instantly if that's not uh, remedied immediately. <clears throat> okay. So from the pulmonary artery, it goes to the lungs, gets oxygenated and then goes back into the heart through the, uh, by way of the pulmonary vein and into the right ventricle and the cycle starts all over again. Okay? Yeah, I know you guys are excited. <laughs> <laughs> all right, taking chest x-rays, some considerations. The first one here is body habitus. Body habitus, know your body habitus because it will determine, well, first of all, what size image receptor are we gonna use on an adult? 14 by the 17. largest one possible, 14 by 17, right? Children and pediatrics are probably going to be using the smaller image receptor, but for adults, you're going to use a 14 by 17. In this case, in the front room, it's a 16 by 16, 16, 16. by 16, okay? But if you do have a rectangular image receptor, how you would use the, uh, the image receptor is going to be based on body habitus. When you're looking at hyperstenic, you guys know your, mm -hmm. your habitus, mm -hmm. right? You have your hyperstenic, stenic, which is your average size. Hypostenic is your <coughs> smaller than average, and then you have your maciated, sickly, aesthetic <coughs> population. So when you're looking at <coughs> body habitus, someone who's hyperstenic, everything gets pushed up and to the side, right? Mm -hmm. Pushed up to the side. Look at the size of the lungs. They're a little bit more broad. So will I take a chest x-ray like this no, or no. like this? Cross. Crosswise. Stenic. Crosswise or lengthwise? Crosswise. Still gonna stay like this, okay? Now, when you go to your hypostenic, now what am I gonna do? Portrait. 
Lengthened. Lengthwise. Mm -hmm. Portrait. Okay, so it's going to go like this. Because now we want to make sure we're not cutting the... Because it starts to sag, right? We don't want to miss the angles of the lungs. And especially here with asthenic... Saggy. You got yeah, saggy lungs. Saggy, <laughs> saggy lungs. You want to go lengthwise. Now the hardest, the hardest population, the hardest population to x-ray are athletes. Yeah, because they have huge lung capacity. So you're kind of stuck between this and this, and you got to determine which is better. Athletes, they're going to go from apices right at the edge all the way to the angles to the edge, and also from side to side. You don't want to miss the, the uh, lateral edges or borders of the lungs but they are the hardest population to take an extra yard. So when you're in a chest, you, there's no collimation, right? You mm -hmm. see the, you open the field size to the, to the IR? To the image receptor, right. So there is no collimation. You open up the size of the IR. Now, however, mm -hmm. I take that back. What happens if you have this? Yeah, you're gonna have a lot of... So you might collimate a little bit, yeah, huh? so you may have to collimate a little bit, okay? <coughs> no body habitus. What's the body habit is here? Hypersthenic. Hypersthenic. What about that one? Sthenic. Okay, they can be a sthenic or asthenic, right? Which chest x-ray do you like better? The sthenic. I like the right. You guys like the right? Mm -hmm. This one's too over-penetrated, right? We're not yeah. seeing any lung structures here. You should be able, on a good chest x-ray, you should be able to see all the hilar area and some vascular markings in the lung field. Isn't that lordotic too? Is it lordotic? No, it's not lordotic. If it was lordotic, it looks a little the clavicle will be pushed up, right? pushed up over the, the APCs of the lungs. Is there like an angle to it or something? No. That looks pretty good to me. There's nothing funny about it. Okay. Can you put on the candy cane or really suck on that? Oh, candy cane? Sure. <laughs> well, you're not going to see the candy cane. Yeah. In, in true anatomy, it looks like a candy cane. Okay. Radiographically, it's just this little notch right here. That's your no, that's your arch. Yeah. <laughs> that's your arch right there. Now, this is going to go up like this. So you're just kind of seeing it coming down like this. This is part of it, but the notch is up there. Which one? Oh, sorry about my drawing. <laughs> Bad drawing. Yeah, but the arch is up there. A little notch. And that first x-ray sucks. Yeah, this is, this. well, this is somebody who may be, okay, have you guys ever heard of emphysema? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so their lungs are going to be wide and broad because they have air trapped into the lungs. So this is why it looks over-penetrated. Air trapped. So someone who has emphysema, one of those pathologies that you want to take into consideration for your adjustment of your technical factors. So someone who has emphysema, you want to decrease your technical factors because it's air trapped. Now the opposite is asthma. It's the opposite of COPD or cold, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Because the flu and now it's more dense, right? So now air can't get in. <clears throat> so the, the lung tissue is a little bit more thick so what are you going to do with your technical factors then? Mump them up. You got to increase it, right? Okay. All right, you guys got it. Let's go stick to my chest. All right. Expiration versus inspiration. Um, three <coughs> dimensions of movement of your thoracic cavity. The first one here is vertical movement. So when taking a breath in, or even expiration, you're going to have ver vertical movement up and down. Okay. Next one here is transverse. Transverse is, okay, side to side. So this movement from side to side. Last one here is the diameter. Let's look at it this way. Now it's front to back. So it moves three ways, up and down, side to side, and then front to back. All right? And also what happens here is during expiration and inspiration, there's also going to be movement of the diaphragm. When breathing in, again, your, your, everything is going to move up and off to the side and also from front to back. And then it's just the opposite when you're breathing air out. Now, some importance here. 
When taking a chest x-ray, the command that you're going to give your patient is take a deep breath in and blow it out. Take another deep breath in and hold it. Why don't we just do that on the first go? Take a deep breath in and hold it. Why do we do it twice? Okay. <clears throat> because on the second time, the first one just kind of lets air in. On the second time, we're telling them to take a deep breath in, it allows more air to get in. So you tell them to take a deep breath in, blow it out, take another deep breath in, now hold it. When you tell them to hold it, don't move, don't breathe, because what we want to do here is in a good inspiration chest x-ray, you should be able to identify 10 ribs. 10 ribs. More specifically, you need to be able to see 10 posterior ribs. Posterior ribs. Well, what's the difference between the posterior rib and an anterior rib? Well, one's front, one's back, right? <laughs> That's the difference. But how do we tell the difference on a radiograph? Okay? Your posterior ribs are going to attach where? To the vertebrae. To the vertebrae what? What kind of vertebrae? Your thoracic. Your thoracic vertebrae. So this is your posterior rib. So you should be able to count a total of 10 on a good inspiration. 10 posterior ribs. One, two, oh, one, oh, two. One, two, three, four, five, so on, all the way down to 10. We can also see 11 over here, right? Where is your anterior rib? Well, let's follow one. Here's, let's take this one. Here's one, and there's the anterior end right here. stops right here, right there, right there, right there. That's your anterior rib. But why does it stop right there? Why is it in a continuous all the way to the sternum? Cartilage. Cartilage. You can't see cartilage on a radiograph. That's why it looks like it just stops abruptly. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. So you're not going to see, you're, not, you're only going to see it up until it, it, it meets with the cartilage. And you can't see cartilage on, on an x-ray. So that's the difference between posterior. If I'm saying identify posterior rib, well, follow it until it, 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 it uh, connects with the vertebrae. That's your posterior rib. On a good inspiration, you're going to see 10. Okay, that's how we know we've got a good chest x-ray. What's going on here? What's that? Where's the floating ribs? Not floating ribs. Male or female? That's a breast shadow. The breast shadow. So those are your breast shadows. All right. Ah, there uh, they are. Now you see them, okay? Breast shadows. So, breast shadow is unavoidable. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you got someone who we call, we, uh, my uh, Miss Greco, my old instructor, she used to call them pendulous breasts. Okay, I, when I hear pendulous, I, I think of voluptuous. Okay, so someone who may have big breasts. Well, we can do something with someone who has big breasts, because if it's thick and it's big, you're going to see a large shadow here, and now it's going to get in the way of the lung field. So if someone who has large pendulous breasts, this includes men, okay? We have them pick up their breasts and pull it off to the side. There you go. And they do a chest x-ray. Well, they don't move like that. Huh? Well, like fake breasts. Fake breasts, you can't do anything about fake breasts. You're going to see the implants in there. Yeah, you will see implants. Okay. Do your breasts, your, your, your breasts split. Take a deep breath and hold your boobs. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How many posterior ribs uh, do we see on the, on your left? We see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's the same radiograph as the previous page, right? There's eleven right there. Is this a good radiograph? 
Yeah. Okay, this is a good radiograph because we got good aspiration. You need to see at least 10 ribs. That's COPD or TB? Just right over here. Or TB? Which one? Am I B? Over here? Here. Here? That one? There? What about this? Nora. What's going on with this? What's going on over here or up here? Right there. Up here? Right there. Right there. This is the hyalur region. Okay. They may have pneumonia. It's highly vascular. Mm -hmm. So this can be pneumonitis or pneumonia. Because it's very, very thick. It should look thick. So like, like a lot this. of fluid down there, right? Right. Well, fluid, you're going to look for down here. Oh. Okay. We'll talk about fluid levels. Is that going to be the... I forgot the name of it. Fluid levels? No. The, the cubitus. The there cubitus, it is. yes. All right. How many do we see here? Let's do... i got to stand back. Okay, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It could be nine or ten, right? Okay, let's just say it's nine. Is it a good chest x ray? No. Okay, because we want to see ten. But again, remember, it does depend on the patient's condition. If they can't breathe, they're not going to be able to take a full inspiration for you. Okay, so it's also based on patient condition. So if that was a healthy person, that'd be... a healthy person... That's a bad x-ray. That's a bad x-ray. Are they going to have you repeat that? No. No. You can see what's going on. You can still see what's going on, okay? Now, <laughs> this, this is why it's also important why we understand breast tissue. Oh, sorry about my hands. About breast tissue, okay? <laughs> see that right there? That's the side. What could that be? Cancer? Where? This right here. A nipple? Because here's the breast tissue here, right? I'm saying one or the now other. Let's just see it. How do we know? So, the, you know, Erica said it could be nipple. It could be. Because the older you get, guess what also gets hard? <laughs> you can get calcified nipples. Oh my God. <laughs> you can get calcification Don't of your nipples. <laughs> no, I'm laughing at Every time something bad, all I hear is Chris and Mecca, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I wait for it every time. <laughs> Women, something to look forward to, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So that could be a calcified nipple. Or that could be, it can be a, a, some kind of tumor. So would they do a mammogram from this point if it was? Well, we take x-rays, and how many x-rays do we take? How many views? A lateral. And We're a also going to do a lateral to see whether or not is this really in the lung field, or is it is it interior or on the outside? But you look at this and say, well, it's around the breast, but yeah, it could be a nipple. Let's do a lateral. That wouldn't be fluid huh? building up at the bottom? No. It's not? Fluid is going to be a little bit different. So the question was, could it be fluid? Well, fluid, if you think about it, fluid should have a horizontal line to it. So if you do have fluid in the lungs, let's just say here's your prostophrenic angles. If you have fluid in your lungs, you're gonna see, you're not gonna see the angles. This is gonna be this is gonna be oh, gone, it's gonna, and it's just gonna, it's gonna settle fluid. right there, right? What about something that she like aspirated? Well, that's just it. That's let's do a lateral. Let's do more than one X-ray. <laughs> okay. Yeah. She's like, what about? Where is Okay, so we want we want to see about ten X-rays, right? All right. I mean, ten ribs. All right. So some uh, patient preparation. We're doing a chest X-ray, right? We're almost done here. We're doing a chest X-ray. What do we need to do to get our patient ready for a chest X-ray? Okay. Right. See now, now you got to do. You have to bring this into your. You have to bring this into your dialogue, Miss Jones. Here is a gown. You guys already did this with some of the other studies that we did. Miss Jones, I'm going to have you step into the room. Here is a gown. Opening goes on the back side. I'm going to need you to remove everything from the waist up, including any type of body jewelry. Okay? And also body jewelry. Bra needs to come off. Necklaces needs to come off. Dangly earrings need to come off. Those would have long hair. We want to get the long hair out of the way because the strands on the hair can show up as pathology. So if you have long hair, tie it up. Get it out of the way. Use a pencil. Use a tourniquet. Use a glove. Tie up the hair. <laughs> yeah, you can use gloves. Yeah. Pencil. Uh, pencil. Tongue depressor. Okay. Whatever. 
whatever, yeah, whatever you got. Make sure to get rid of any O2 lines. So if you have a patient coming down from the unit, ER, ICU, tele telemetry, get the oxygen tubing out of the way. We don't want to take the tubing out because we still want them to breathe, okay? Just move the tubing out of the way. EKG, if they're having the EKG patches, you may want to remove those two as well. Okay. But again, it, you have to treat each patient on a case-by-case -case basis. You might not be able to remove those. Yeah, right? you may not be able to remove the O2 tubing. You may not be able to move EKG lines so you take what and you get. patches. But you can still kind of, you leave the patches and the lines in, you just kind of pull them off to the side. So the only thing that should be in the view should be the lungs minus the wires.